好啦，我谂差唔多十啊。I think five minutes have passed, and the deputations are seated. Let us start the next session. There are twenty-six deputations attending, or、uh, maybe not exactly twenty-six. But I like to remind the deputations that if you need to use the earpiece, channel zero is floor, channel one is Cantonese, channel two is English. I'd、like to remind you that your、uh, submissions today at the meeting here will not be covered or protected or exempted by the Legislative Council Powers and Privileges Ordinance. Each deputation will have three minutes, and like what we did in the first session, I will be inviting you to speak. And if the secretary would like to say something at the end, we will listen to him. And then we will allow members to ask questions. So now is the turn for deputations to speak, and the first one is Civic Party, Mr. Patrick Lang. Thank you, Chairman. The Civic Party has always supported legislation on SMW, and after a very long period of work, it has been set at twenty-eight dollars one and a half years ago. Actually. The SMW is to protect grassroots workers and also people in trades without a bargaining power. Some businessmen said that this will push up prices. When there is an SMW, then other people will also expect their wages or salaries to go up. Well, I think that is only right. Because if you have SMW legislation, then there will be adjustment in the labour market, and people should be paid a reasonable level of salary or wages. That is not a problem. The SMW has not caused unemployment. In fact, Hong Kong is near full employment, and also. SMW has alleviated poverty a little. According to recent reports, fifty thousand people have been lifted out of poverty. Most of them are the working poor. And if you look at CSSA figures, about three thousand nine hundred people have left or. Have received less CSSA payments, so the SMW has somehow alleviated poverty. Some people, however, said that SMW will cause more inflation. But if you look at the figures, inflation has more been caused by rental, travelling expenses, or electricity tariff, or even the exchange rate of RMB because our food has become more expensive. All that has caused. Inflation. Now we have a biannual review of SMW, and we think all the data are lagging behind today's situation. And the SMW is not keeping up with the inflation rate. Therefore, we insist that there should be. More frequent reviews of the SMW, namely on a yearly basis.、Uh, you should be more efficient in reviewing the SMW, so that it will not lag behind reality, and so that workers can really have wages that are aligned with inflation. You can look at Japan, South Korea, the mainland, Australia, New Zealand, and the UK, which are quite successful with yearly review of the SMW. Thank you, Mr. Leung. Mr. Si Cheng Wei of the Hong Kong Women Workers Association. Thank you, Chairman. Our basic stance is that we support what many other speakers have said. We think SMW should be subject to yearly reviews, and the level should not be lower than thirty-five dollars, and it should be implemented as such as soon as possible. We have heard from chambers of commerce and other businessmen. And all the time they are talking about the same things, but still, I think we need to reiterate our response. First of all, they will say that if SMW is increased, then 
inflation will be worse because uh, twenty-eight dollars has already caused a lot of inflation. Well, if wages go up by that small level, they are saying that the businessmen would have a lot more costs, and in the end, it will be transferred to consumers, and employees will stand to lose. But they do not mention rental and also the price of raw food. Those are the main factors for causing inflation. And I have heard some businessmen say outside the room that if this will be increased to thirty-five dollars, then、uh, that would be a forty percent increase. It will be good if、uh, their own salaries, they said, would go up by twenty-five percent. But why don't they talk about rental increase, which is a、uh, Going up by twenty-five percent, and just look at the actual、uh, dollars. And rental can go up by tens of thousands of dollars, while workers are only asking for a seven-dollar increase. And also the knock-on effect. I agree that there will be some impact on employers. However, if there is not an SMW. And if they are already earning more than SMW, then should, shouldn't they expect to get even more when there is an SMW? People should have salary reviews every year, but now people are suffering、uh, because everything is blamed on the SMW. But an expectation of salary increase should only be reasonable by anybody who works. And some companies are saying it's difficult to. Hire people.、Uh, there was a cleaning alliance worker saying that people are drained from the cleaning industry because it is a hard job. Well, the job has always been hard, with or without an SMW. Why did not? Why did they not say it before there was the SMW? Why are they blaming it on the SMW? So there is a lack of manpower. Because the economy is doing well, a lot of trades are flourishing, so there is a lack of manpower. This has nothing to do with SMW. If bosses think that they cannot retain people, then you should just adjust the wages, and people will be happy to stay with you. Thank you, Mr. Peter Mock from the Public Omnibus Operators Association. Thank you, Chairman. We have、uh, an SMW, a statutory one. Within a very short time, we do not see its exact impact. We think more structural analysis should be done first. Just take our sector as an example. I can tell you that we cannot hire anybody with SMW. But does it mean that you can always hire people if you pay a good wage? Well, structurally, it is the trade; it is not the wage that is preventing us from hiring people. So I hope the administration will really do structural analysis before revisiting the level of the SMW. As for a mismatch between jobs and people, well, I think that we cannot discuss that、uh, in any meaningful way today. Maybe the administration again should do structural analysis before we discuss SMW again. Thank you, Chairman. Next, from Hong Kong Federation of Restaurants and Related Trades, Mr. Tam Hop Singh. Thank you, Chairman. Now, on the review of SMW rates, we s- conducted a survey、uh, seeking the views of、uh, two hundred and thirty-six eateries, and they think that the review cycle is somewhat short because if a review is conducted before completion of a financial cycle, the data may not be appropriate for the review, and for the review cycle. They are of the view that a review should be conducted once every two years, so that full of information can be obtained,、uh, followed by detailed analysis, in order to come up with the most appropriate arrangement. As for the SMW rate, 
a review doesn't mean that the rate will go upward for sure. It depends on the social economic environment and the affordability of the, of the um, market before a decision can be reached. And the outcome of a review may be an upward or even downward or uh, or freeze uh, adjustment or freeze. As far as the economy is concerned, our economy or the global economy is affected by the Eurozone debt crisis and the U.S. economy, and there is also a downside risk. So appropriate considerations to be should be given to these factors when considering the SMW rate. Otherwise, the increased SMW rate may lead to a knock-on effect. And a new round of rippling effect uh, or knock-on effect, including rippling effect or um, other effects, have uh, appeared, which may exert heavy pressure on employers. Roughly speaking, at least there is a pressure for an upward increase of 11.1 .1 increase. And if the rate is set at $30, the catering industry anticipates that in terms of wage costs, it will go up by $210 million. And we interviewed some of our members. 63% of the re respondents of the view that the SMW rate should remain at $28, 24% um, opted for $29, the, remaini the remaining percentage up for $30. So we will face huge impact if the SMW rate is increased. Next, Mr. William Zhang from the Chamber of Security Industry. Now, the Chamber of Security Industry has um, more than 30,000 members. We uh, think that uh, the SMW should remain at $28, but we reluctantly accept $30. Apart from the SMW level, there are other aspects that may have more profound impact on SME employers. And since the implementation of the M SMW, contracts signed between employers and security guards have been impacted upon. But unfortunately, um, no at attention has been paid on the contract service contract uh, between service providers and clients. So, for example, can the service provider void the contract because the SM because of the increased SMW rate, or can the service charge levels be adjusted to tie in with the adjustment to the SMW rate? I hope that uh, members could also consider these points. The chamber has all along supported the implementation of SMW, but after its implementation, we felt that we had been cheated by the government. Since its implementation, in terms of government service contract or the standard employment contract, um, we see this uh, paid rest days. So it has um, turned many employers into unscrupulous employers because, first of all, we came up with a set of calculations on a different basis, but then the government is saying that the rest days should be paid as well. And for government service contracts, they're not treated in the same manner. Before its implementation, it's said that the adjustment will be linked to the CPI, for example, the service charge will also ad be adjusted downwards. But after implementation of SMW, for a contract period of three years, the service charge cannot be adjusted. It's been stipulated in the service contract. So how can contractors and t um, 
or estimate what the adjustment of SMW will be. So due to time constraints, I'm going to skip some of the points. All in all, we think that SMW is strictly correlated to the likelihood of uh, lesser quality workers being displaced from the workforce. For example, we have workers aged 60, and they have not yet reached the retirement of 65, but some clients are already complaining about um, the their, their age, and they say that because of the increase in um, in wages, they should be sacked, and now they have been displaced. And if the SMW is set at the rate that's exceedingly high, it's difficult for us to calculate the statutory um, LSP or the liability. I hope that the SMW can be set based on a basket of indicator instead of an arbitrary and an, ex uh, and an exceedingly high figure. Next, Mr. Bondi Wen from Hong Kong and Kowloon Motor Boats and Tuck Boats Association. Well, we share the same view uh, with other trade associations. We're not against SMW. SMW is here to protect low-income earners. But on the review of SMW rates, we think that a gradual approach should be taken. It should be based on the... Uh, adjustment in price levels and the affordability of the market. For the proposed recommendation of $30, I believe that uh, the decision has come or the recommendation has come by after a lengthy discussion. It's a rather mild increase. It will not affect the harmony of our society or it will not drive a wedge in the community. We should not be wasting time battling against each other. So I hope that the legislative process can be expedited, and I hope that the increase uh, can be accepted by both parties. It's a mild one. Next, Mr. Cyrus Lai from Kowloon District Tourism and Passengers Omnibus Operators Association. Now, SMW, if we use an across-the-board figure of, say, 28 or $30. I wonder if an SMW rate can be set for specific industries or sectors. The, qu the problem is many drivers have decided to move away from driving to um, easier jobs with lesser workload. So my suggestion is whether we can have SMW rates for different sectors or, or industries or whether labor can be imported to take up the same job. Thank you. Next, Mr. Johnny Lee from Yunnan District Tourists and Passengers Omnibus Operators Association. Since the implementation of SMW, Well, mostly it was the frontline workers who benefited from the SMW. Many of them have to take up harsh jobs, and many of them had shifted to uh, easier jobs earning the same level of wages. For um, jobs not affected by SMWs, well, coach drivers uh, is uh, one of the examples, and coach drivers would now say that, um, well, at the same wage level, they would opt for easier jobs like security guards. For unpopular jobs or occupations or jobs with lesser workload, These jobs would attract workers to move from their own industries. And for employers in these industries, they may opt for younger or um, younger workers or workers with high productivity. And therefore, uh, for some industries, uh, some jobs are not taken up. For example, cleaning. Uh, and uh, or cleaners in um, catering industry. 
So if the SMW is increased substantially from twenty-eight dollars to say thirty-five dollars, as suggested by some members, this great divide will have an even more profound impact on SMEs. Well, we have um, low bargaining power. Well, some ask why we um, do not tackle big developers. Well, members, you have more powers, and why aren't you ta going after developers? If you can't do that, you shouldn't ask SME to do that. So I think that the SMW rate of $30 is acceptable. It should be kept at that rate. As for review once every two years, I think that this is appropriate. If we have yearly review, for employers, if they are forced to accept this SMW rate, for workers with uh, lower productivity, they will be put in a more disadvantaged position because for more productive workers, they have more choices. So you should look after workers with lower productivity or lower competitiveness. You should um, also allay their concerns. So I suggest that we have a review every well, once every two years. Thank you. Mr. Lewis Kong from Hong Kong District Tourists and Passengers Omnibus Operators Association. Now, our association, in relation to the present SMW rate of $28, without detailed analysis and the availability of statistics, have some views on the proposed increase in such a short time in 2013. We hope that analysis could be conducted before um, the rate is adjusted. In particular, adaptation mentioned uh, rates for different rates for specific industries. Our industry is facing a dire uh, situation since the implementation of SMW. Our sector have um, experienced a high wastage rate, and um, these um, job positions include drivers and uh, repair workers, and even it's uh, difficult even to recruit nannies on school coaches. Well, in the past. Uh, our, our sector used to uh, earn a higher level of income comparing to the average income, but now we have become low uh, low paid jobs, and we're experiencing when and we're experiencing a, a labor shortage. For larger companies, uh, they can make arrangements to make up for the labor shortfall, but for smaller companies, they can do nothing but to close their business. For drivers, they have to stay in their vehicles uh, throughout the day, and very often they need to. Uh, they will get stuck in traffic jams. It's difficult to ask them to memorize all the new roads and not to get lost. For example, for the uh, airport express station in Kowloon, the roads uh, alignments keep changing, and it's difficult for drivers to memorize all the roads. And they're also suffering high uh, work stress. Uh, they don't know when they can even uh, answer the nature's call. And we're facing all sorts of problems, high uh, rentals, high um, uh, uh, repair costs, etc. We don't want to transfer the cost to directly to schools and clients. But the problem cannot be resolved this way. Schools have been complaining um, the high um, hiring fees of coaches. We don't want to see any more knock-on or rippling effects to go on. I hope the administration would um, continue a detailed analysis to to conduct a detailed analysis, uh, followed by a detailed discussion before the new rates are implemented. Next, Mr. Leung from Association of Restaurant Managers. Thank you. 
streamlining manpower will lead to a lowering of quality of service. The SME has had a knock-on effect and wages uh, have been inflated. Many employers have uh, resorted to streamlining manpower and that has led to a lowering of the quality of service. There are shortages in the labor market still. Actually, the SMW has aimed at heightening the uh, salary of grassroots workers. However, the employers have resorted to streamlining manpower and those who have remained now have a bigger workload. The SMW has done more harm than good. It has not enhanced the quality of living for employees. It has caused more inflation and has caused grievances amongst the public. The catering trade has a lot of operating difficulties. Rentals have climbed and raw materials, food materials have heightened and public utilities have become more expensive and even insurance policies have become more in, 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 uh, in expensive. And they can very well collapse if the economy should take a turn for the worse. And there is now a more severe shortage of manpower. Is it that if you pay more SMW, you will uh, actually resolve the problem? Sometimes we are offering $40 and yet we cannot hire people. Uh, I'd like to let you know an innovative idea. Many of the jobs have been lost because of SMW. I'd like to ask whether CSSA recipients can join the labor market. They are a big labor force. Can we not adjust the welfare system so that CSSA recipients can have a bigger income? Sometimes they prefer not to work because the income is not high. Just look at a PLB driver who is in his 40s or 50s, but he has chosen to get CSSA because he says, I should not work because I need just $70 a day, and if I get four or $5,000 in CSSA, I do not have to work. In fact, you can tap into such resources. And also, those who are still young, maybe you can track him for two, three months and to see why he is not working and instead is relying on CSSA. I think you should tap into this potential labor market. Some people are getting CSSA because there is this welfare system and many people prefer to have CSSA instead of working. Thank you. Mr. Chang, our organizer for Social Affairs Committee, the Federation of Hong Kong and Kowloon Labor Unions. Thank you. I'd like to make two points on the topic today. One, the review cycle of uh, SMW and also the role of academics in SMW. First of all, there must be a yearly review of SMW. It is clear why this is so. Let me show you this chart. It shows you the uh, time lag if there is a biannual review. In 2013, we have another SMW, but as you know, the data for 2013 have been based on the second quarter of 2010. If you use the same logic in 2014, there will be a review, and then in 2015, there will be another new SMW. But then before mid-2015, the data would be based on data in 2011. In other words, the so-called uh, biannual review it's not just about two years. The time lag can be as much as three years or four years. Many deputations have said that they have sought an SMW of $30 two years ago, but our federation has actually asked for $35 many years ago. But nevertheless, uh, labor voices have been ignored. We believe a few years down the road, we will be asking for more than $35. However, by the time, if the actual operation of SMW is such that it's still lagging behind public opinion, then who should be held responsible? I think the community supports an annual review of SMW so that it will eventually be aligned with our aspirations. And also, the role of academics in setting SMW. The administration loves to engage academics to speak on the SMW in order to uh, balance uh, other views. Well, we support that in principle. However, in actual implementation, we have found that employers and academics 
always emphasize the negative impact of SMW. Say, for example, if it is over thirty dollars, there will be a knock-on effect, and um, unemployment and inflation will be caused, etc. You know that academics have professional academic background. However, at the same time, they would be using economic theories, and they. Seldom talk about the actual benefits of SMW for workers, employers, and enterprises are very smart. They can identify the academics who would support their stance of、uh, objection to SMW. The administration has said that they would like to remain balanced, so they would not like to speak on behalf of workers. There are three. Labour representatives in the MW Commission. I think they are having a very difficult time. Thank you, Mr. Stanley Chang from the Lok Ma Chow China Hong Kong Freight Association. Thank you, Chairman. I believe the majority of employers would not be miserly about SMW if、uh, it is a good employee. They don't mind whether it's twenty-eight dollars or even forty dollars. Just look at the container trade. The average、uh, hourly rate will not be less than fifty dollars, but nobody is willing to work in this sector because, with the implementation of SMW,、uh, there is this、uh, readjustment in many trades. In our trade, for example, we just don't have jobs that will attract less than fifty dollars. However, if you look at the security trade. Two years ago, the salary went up from five thousand dollars to ten thousand dollars. It was an alarming surge, and if people also have computer skills, even if they were making ten thousand dollars, we have to pay twenty, thirty percent more. And employers are really、uh, paying out a lot more. Just look at the container trade; thirty percent of our turnover. Goes towards wages for drivers. Listen carefully. Thirty percent of our turnover. I'm not talking about thirty percent of pure net profit. Do we want to turn this society into a society where Lechko will plan for our next generation that they do not have to work for their own well-being? Some people say. The SMW should be reviewed every year. That would cause society to regress. I believe employers who are sitting in this room have not inherited fortunes from their parents. They have worked hard to become employers. Now people are saying that if you have thirty dollars, you will have dignity. I don't think so. Even twenty thousand dollars will not give you dignity. It's not about money. But I believe the welfare system in Hong Kong. Well, I have heard this recently that some restaurants cannot hire people, and they are hire CSSA recipients. They pay them cash. The LW Bureau should pay more attention to the shortage of labor problem. If there is a good supply of labor, why would we be miserly and and hag over whether it is thirty, thirty three, thirty five? Is not that now there is business, but no. People、uh, are coming forward to take up the jobs. Some of my、um, sector people have said that the labor department is going to his office to say how much are you paying your staff. But I hope you will actually conduct rates and checks at restaurants to see whether、uh, people are receiving cash because they are also CSSA recipients. Thank you. Recently.、Um, The Oxfam has received certain figures. You, this is Mr. Tam of Labour Party. It is said that there are 1.17 million people who are in poverty, and 658,000 people are within the working poor bracket. And these figures have jumped from those 10 years ago, when there is a big wealth gap, when there is high inflation, when there is a high working poor rate. Then the discussion should be. For increasing SMW so as to resolve the problem, but then we have heard many crooked arguments, including those from businessmen today in this room. Number one, 
It is said that with SMW, some enterprises have collapsed, some have to streamline their manpower supply, but then they are not asking questions about rental increase. Some deputations said, Li Chek Yan, you should fight the big employers if you are so smart, but then if you cannot fight a winning battle with the employers, and then you are suppressing the employees. And also just look at Link Reed. The average rent increase was 25.9% last year, which is way above inflation. SMEs have a difficulty surviving. Don't you know it is because of the high rental instead of SMW? Don't blame everything on SMW. The second crooked or distorted argument, you cannot hire people because of SMW. I remember in the last 10 years when we discussed legislating for SMW, it was always said that SMW will cause unemployment, but now it's another, the other way around. You cannot engage people because of SMW. It seems uh, you can make use of any argument you like, depending on the situation. Number three, in this discussion on SMW, I think the administration cannot shirk its responsibility. The MW Commission proposes to raise it to $30, but this can hardly catch up with inflation. It lacks behind situation. It, it cannot catch up with inflation of this year. And actually, you are using data in the year before last. It is totally unfair to workers. I would ask the administration to amend the law so there could be a yearly review so that grassroots workers can be paid wages that can catch up with inflation. And our stance remains that the hourly rate should be no less than $35 and there should be annual reviews. We also uh, think that it should be implemented on the 1st of January instead of a few months after. Thank you. From the Liberal Party, Mr. Kenny Yun. After implementation of SMW last May, or in May last year, it seems there was not a problem, but because the economy was good last year, so the negative impact of the SMW has not been seen. However, there are many inflationary problems, and people are under pressure. If you eat in a Hong Kong-style cafeteria, it might have cost you $23, but now you need to pay $40. Property management fees have also surged. The inflation rate was 5.3%. It was a record high after 1998. Even sandwich class people, the middle class people, feel a heavier burden. Those who suffer from high rental and the low currency exchange, um, SMEs are having a hard time. The Xi Yan University survey has shown that wages have climbed by 11.1%. In inten labor intensive trades, that figure has been 18.5%. And these have not taken into account uh, cost increases in other aspects. In fact, enterprises also face the difficulty of hiring people. This is a fact. The SMW is set at $28 across the board, and some trades that are more um, labor-intensive, cannot uh, hire people like um, elderly institutions and uh, cleaners and also uh, dishwashers, uh, people who wash dishes in eateries. And yet the administration has not made any proposals to resolve the problem. There is no uh, report of any findings. Let us look at the global economy. We still have the euro debt problem, and the U.S. is facing a fiscal cliff. And the mainland also sees a slowing of its economy to the retail sector, service and hotel sectors. They would be negatively impacted upon in the next two years. The economic growth would only be 1.6% this year instead of the 5% expected. The Liberal Party thinks that we should not enhance the SMW now. The increase of SMW from $28 to 30 or by 7.1%, that is already uh, the limit 
what uh, SMEs can afford. We don't want SMW and inflation to be chasing up on one another because that would be a vicious cycle. We hope the administration will give the public a chance for reprieve and a, a chance for survival for SMEs. A large climb in SMW will cause the entire society to suffer. Thank you. Mr. Kuo, thank you, Chairman. Well, minimum wage is an interesting topic. Before a line of poverty is drawn, well, um, the rate could be set at a, uh, any level, $20 or $40. Minimum wage is there to protect an individual. Well, the recent proposal to increase it by $2 uh, so that the rate will become uh, $30. In reality, is $30 sufficient? Well, last time we talked about this, Secretary did not listen. Uh, like um, now, Secretary uh, lowered his head. Since implementation of the SMW, the uh, a bowl of noodles was $18. But uh, at the, by the time when it was uh, implemented, it was twenty dollars. Now it's twenty-five dollars, and during peak seasons, uh, during um, uh, uh, during Christmas and New Year, um, the price of a bowl of beef noodles was twenty-seven dollars. So um, let's say for someone who only consumes two meals a day, uh, not luxurious meals, just twenty-seven um, dollars. Well then. Uh, even with the proposed increase, uh, after a month, it will only get $100 more. So can this $100, ex uh, $100 extra be able to pay for all the uh, increase in utility bills and transportation fares? Uh, therefore, we're seeing more and more people in poverty. And the proposed rate is completely out of reality because of the time lagging effect. We should use um, forecasts or estimates instead. Don't fall into this trap. Uh, Chairman, we do not have a poverty line right now, but in fact we can uh, draw a reference from two, um, two sets of data. One is CSSA, the other is the uh, Application for PRH for um, individual, the income limit is uh, eight thousand seven hundred and forty, and if there is um, rental rent allowance then or rent relief, then the amount is six thousand one hundred and eighteen. And if someone works for nine hours at the rate of thirty seven dollars. Uh, the person is still entitled to the HA subsidy. Um, Chairman, I don't really understand one point, but my time is almost up. Should we draw a poverty line first or to have SMW first? I think that we should do something about the population policy, followed by universal retirement protection, followed by poverty line before we have uh, um, concrete SMW rate. Thank you, Mr. Kwok. Next, Mr. Kong from Hong Kong Association for Democracy and People's Livelihood. Now, our association, first of all, supports the SMW rate uh, to be set at $33. It should um, be uh, not less than uh, $35, ideally speaking. And we ask for an annual review because an annual review can fully reflect the uh, um, the uh, impact of inflation. Uh, a yearly review is better than an I uh, better than a, a biennial review. It will minimize the time lag effect. Because if there is time lag effect, the data will not be accurate. Now, for the proposed increase from twenty eight to thirty dollars, it still cannot uh, help improve the livelihoods of the grassroots as said by many deputations. So uh, it should be increased at least to $33, if not $35. That's not that's our position. And when the $28 rate was first set, the $28 rate did not even 
match the living standards back then. The twenty-eight dollar rate was in fact lower, and if it's increased to thirty dollars, it can barely catch up with inflation, let alone the shortfall、um, in a previous rate. So, for political parties and labor unions, I think we already have this consensus. And I'd like to respond to some comments made by the business sector or the so-called the middle class,、uh, those representing the middle class interests or employers. Now, apart from SMW, there are a lot of factors that affect your business. For example, rental, raw material prices, external factors, as mentioned by others. For example, the global economic situation. Well, nothing is mentioned about all these things. All the blame is put on SMW and the proposed increase, and it is accused of causing labor shortage. I really don't see the relevance. Don't just say that SMW is causing a labor shortage, and the administration should do something about it. State your justifications. Just like、uh, inflation, you should justify your argument. It's illogical. Your business environment, by and large, is affected by rental or even、um, soaring raw material prices. So you should. Be clear about who your enemy is. It's the developers and landlords. Please go after them. Mr. Lam Yongki from CTU. Now two points. First, on thirty dollars. Now on the proposed increase to thirty dollars, we are very disappointed. Two years ago, it was twenty-eight dollars. Now it's proposed to increase to thirty dollars. That means the increase. It's only three point five percent by one dollar per year. The average increase in wages is five point one percent. It's lower than that. It's lower than inflation rate. So the increase in SMW rate is lower than the increase in wage and also inflation. So with high inflation, how can grassroots survive? If they go out, they need to pay hefty expenses. If they stay in, they need to pay hefty utility bills. The grassroots won't be able to improve their living. Now, the purpose of the SMW, as said, is to forestall excessively low wages. But now, the minimum wage commission. Is bowing to the pressure from the business sector, and the grassroots continue to live in poverty. The administration emphasizes that、um, the wealth gap can be narrowed by SMW. Well, we're actually having the greatest、uh, wealth gap in the world. And the proposed increase in SMW will not be able to narrow this wealth gap. So, the FT, the CTU is of the view that the SMW rate should not be lower than the CSSA level.、Uh, for CSSA in 2011, 2012, the amount is roughly three thousand four hundred. So, having taken into account the、uh, number of person to be supported and the expenses when one goes out to work,、um, an hourly wage of thirty-five dollars should be set as the SMW in order to make ends meet. The adjustment of SMW rates should also go above inflation and the increase in average wages in order to narrow the income disparity. Now, the second point is that we think the、um, minimum wage com、uh, commission is not representative enough. They never disclose their agenda or the or held the、um, meetings in public. It's like working behind closed doors. So finally, 
We hope that the transparency can be enhanced. Thank you, Mr. Lam. Next, Mr. Punman Han from People Alliance for Minimum Wage. Thank you, Chairman. Well, we once again urge the SMW rate to be set at $35. And also for a yearly review, uh, this is um, what we advocate because we see the negative impact of biennial reviews. As said by even for the business sector, well, 7.1 percent um, representatives from the business sector is saying that it is already the ceiling. But for the grassroots, it's not enough. So a biennial review is um, neither beneficial to the business sector nor the gra uh, nor employees. And we see that for. Um, workers' wage increase, they can never catch up with inflation. And next time, it, um, during the next cycle, it will be more difficult to catch up with inflation. So in the long run, this will become a vicious cycle. Just now, Secretary said that there is no time lag in terms of the data and statistics, but um, this uh, is just a verbal trick because most of the data including employment, uh, operating costs, and inflation. Uh, all the data used was one space uh, in tw 2009. The, S uh, the MWC also adopted the same data when it announced the proposed SMW rate. So how can you say that there is no time lag? This is a fact. So this time, when we review the rate, we should include forecasts so that we can uh, so that the time lag effect can be minimized. Second point: the business sector wishes to lower the SMW rate using the pretext of eurozone crisis and a certain external economy. Well, the Eurozone crisis actually happened two years ago. And during that time, the SMW, I mean, um, there had been a wage increase. So on the one hand, they're using Eurozone crisis as a pretext. But on the other hand, many large enterprises uh, have offered pay rise. So this is um, a blatant discrimination against grassroots workers. Because grassroots workers should not get a pay rise. And um, finally, I'd like to invite um, people to check the CNSD's report on inflation. Apparently, inf inflation is induced largely by uh, increasing rental. So you should check the information first. Thank you. Next, Mr. Chen Kuo Kong from Hong Kong Vehicle Transportation Association. Thank you, Chairman. I represent the transportation trade. The SMW has not made a negative impact on our sector, but with SMW drivers and workers have been leaving the sector. This is because they would like to have a more so-called comfortable job. They don't have to be on the road all the time. They are quite incarcerated in that vehicle. They cannot even use the washroom. They will go to the security trade, for example. 99% of them have opted for a security job. Our drivers are fetching an hourly rate of 50 to $60, and yet we cannot get enough people to drive the vehicles. Why is that so? Let's look into that, Chairman. If you want to raise wages, the SMW, please think twice so that there will be more mismatch between jobs and people.
because certainly some jobs are really lacking the manpower they need. Thank you. Next, Mr. Lo Wong Fong from the Chamber of Hong Kong Logistics Industry. Thank you, Chairman. I um, I find it regrettable that you say SMW should go to $35. In other words, you need to heighten the present level by 25%. I hope you know that most people in the logistics industry are SMEs. I hope our charges can go up by 25%. To be frank with you, we have been lowering our fees and charges because of the financial tsunami, euro debt crisis, etc., and we face a lot of competition, especially from the region itself. So we are reducing uh, what we charge instead of charging more. The wages we pay have been higher than the SMW, but because of the statutory as SMW, it has pushed up uh, wages as a whole, and there has been a high wage stage rate just over the last year. Let us look at um, the courier services. 20% of the manpower has been lost. There used to be five courier companies in one street in Kwai Chong, but now there has been only one left and 100 uh, logistics companies have folded, and ours is a disaster area. Our drivers have fetched higher salaries than bus drivers or PLB drivers, but because of the SMW, many of our drivers have been lost to other sectors. We have increased wages. We have also launched free uh, cross-boundary driver license courses, but still nobody came forward to apply. We have lost our advantage as a logistics industry, and our neighbors have enjoyed the advantage of competition. I think in the long run, our industry will shrink and it may disappear, and I'm not being an alarmist when I say this. I think $30 is acceptable because basically we're already paying more than that. I think it's acceptable, but it should not uh, hike average wages even more. Thank you. Next, Mr. Shiu Ka Fai, a uh, uh, Peter, Peter Shiu, District Councillor. Hong Kong has no natural resources. We rely on capitalism and a free economy to succeed. Last year, the SMW was set at $28, and many people said that uh, hopefully it could narrow the wealth gap. But then there are pros and cons with every policy. Many economists are of the view that the SMW will affect three groups of people. One, people with the lowest productivity. Those people who have had 70% productivity would only get 70% wages. Well, they may not be able to sustain themselves. The Liberal Party, the self-reliant people, think that the administration should support them so they have dignity. However, the SMW has left them without a job. Uh, we also lost that kind of productivity, and then we have to use 100% social resources to support them. Secondly, the lowly skilled and lowly educated SMW may give them $1,000 more, but you can see in Hong Kong style cafeteria, um, the meals are much more expensive. The cost will be transferred onto the shoulders of the consumers, and the workers are consumers. They are just like a donkey with a carrot in front of them. The SMW and inflation will be chasing up on each other. And the third group, SMEs, the more government policies there are, the more tied their hands are, and they would be less competitive faced with the conglomerates. If you don't want conglomerates to kill off SMEs one by one, then SMW should be looked at. A Nobel Prize winner, The Economist, said that People can set an SMW, but you cannot guarantee jobs. Some people said with SMW, you can see the unemployment rate is low. But you must remember, we have started the 10 infrastructural projects. Some construction workers are working for $1,000 or $2,000 a day. But this is not because of the SMW. It's purely because of supply and demand in the market. The wealth gap should be tackled by population policy, new industries, education, and land supply, and also rental. But because of time constraint, I cannot go into all these. Some members of the public have said this to me. 
they said, "It seems the Hong Kong society is going down the route of communism and socialism without us knowing it." I like to remind you, the largest socialist country in the world, and that is our country, they are having. Socialism with special characteristics, because after a few decades, they know that without competition, there can be no progress. But Hong Kong seems to be going、um, on exactly the reverse route. So I think the less interference by government, the better. Thank you, deputations. Now I give a little time for the secretary to respond, if he has any response. If not, it's all right. Well, I think I have already spoken my mind during the first session, so I have nothing to add. Members,、uh, Raymond Chan, I have、uh, three minutes for you. I have heard a lot of views from the business sector. Every time they speak, they say they do not object or even they support the SMW. But then, I can see that they just don't understand the concept of SMW. They say they support SMW because it is set at twenty-eight dollars or thirty dollars. Or maybe thirty-one dollars or thirty-two dollars, and they think there is no impact on them. However, if it reaches thirty-three dollars, they will object. So while they accept it, they are、um, cheating themselves. They have said in their speeches that they、um, actually not accept SMW. I believe if、uh, we say we want to abolish SMW, I think you will agree. Mr. Tam said that. The review can lead to a freeze or lowering of the SMW, and we are talking about whether we should have yearly or biannual reviews. If the review would be beneficial to both employers and employees, well, you have talked about the fiscal cliff, euro debt crisis, and financial tsunami. Shouldn't it be better to have a yearly review because all these、uh, global economic problems can cause the SMW to be lowered? So why are you afraid? This is because the SMW has always been on the low side. So it seems every review will bring a hike. And you said、uh, some people said that、uh, they have been trapped by the administration.、Uh, they thought that、uh, SMW would benefit them, but then now they even have to pay wages on rest days. And it seems the business sector. Does feel in their hearts that、uh, they have been cheated by the administration? Can you clarify? When the SMW was launched, we said very clearly that rest days and meal breaks are conditions to be negotiated between employers and employees, and they should be in an employment contract. And the administration will not dictate how they should be tackled. As a responsible employer, we have decided that only rest days should be paid after very prudent consideration. But meal breaks are still excluded, and I emphasize that as a good employer, this is what should be done. We have no intention to legislate, nor should should we legislate. All along, this is an employment condition, and we have not ambushed the.、Uh, Employers, I think that has been a misunderstanding, Mr. Raymond Chan. Anything else? But since there is this problem, shouldn't the administration explain things more to employers so that、um, they don't feel so aggrieved? Well, I think over the past year or so, we have emphasized that rest days and meal breaks, and whether they should be paid, well, must be an employment. Uh, condition and that should be discussed between employers and employees. Yes, please.、Uh, we welcome any response from the deputations. Well, what is important is that many contractors work on government projects, and we also work on private residential property. The fact is, over ninety percent of private housing estates cannot afford paying wages on rest days. Because the median wage of security guards has gone up by over ten percent, excluding、um, payment on rest days. If it is included, the wages would go up by thirty percent. So private housing estates cannot afford it. And in Hong Kong, given it is a small place, we have five hundred odd 
licensed security companies. You can see what kind of cutthroat competition there is. So no companies can enjoy a marginal profit of ten percent. So the whole will be transferred to the management fee payers, who are the small owners of、uh, or flat owners, and. The administration might well become an unscrupulous employer. Well, there are many flat owners. I believe the costs can be shared among them, but I believe、uh, people are making use of this as an excuse to increase management fees. And the increase in management fees would be higher than the increase in wages. I appeal to you to be more transparent because tenants and flat owners. Are not happy because they think that the management fees have been increased more than an、uh, increase in wages. In fact, we are very transparent. We actually show the wage payment record of all security guards. Many estates are very transparent. Let me state a viewpoint here. Let's say that. All economies in the world should review SMW after Hong Kong has had an SMW because they have been scaremongering, saying that there would be a heightening of the unemployment rate and workers will lose their jobs. But in Hong Kong, it's the other way around. The SMW has caused a shortage of supply of labor. I think all the economies all over the world should come to study the Hong Kong situation. If SMW is so good, we should heighten the SMW so that there will be a more severe shortage of labor. It is something good. Why? You cannot hire people, and that is something good. That is because you want to hire people because you have business. If that is the case, it means you have dis business. So why are you so sad? And secondly, what is the fact? I, I must rebut one argument. You seem to be saying that the whole wide world has become security guards. That's not the case. Even the security trade lacks people to the tune of ten percent. This is what is said by their association. You say everybody has become a security guard, but how come we still lack security guards? Hong Kong is such a good place. We have a shortage of labor. We have a good economy. So why are you so sad? Why are you afraid of the euro debt crisis? You don't have to be afraid of anything. We are doing extremely well. I can give you a figure. Without SMW, the statistics showed we are not talking about the working population, but the statistics,、uh, which included major trades,、uh, excluding civil servants. First and second quarter of twenty. Eleven two hundred and sixty thousand, and then in the second quarter of this year, there was an addition of sixty thousand. In other words, sixty thousand more people were hired. You are right in saying there is a shortage of labor because sixty thousand people have been and have been hired, and there is also an increase of ten thousand odd vacancies. In other words, the overall labor force has been expanded by sixty thousand people, and on the other hand. There are more vacancies to the tune of ten thousand.、Uh, time is almost up. If you agree, we can extend the meeting by five minutes. And if somebody should raise his hand, well, we'll extend the meeting by ten minutes.、Uh, secretary and deputations, please. If deputations want to speak, we might have to give the meeting fifteen minutes more. Say, kids. So, I just want to tell everyone that if we. Introduce SMW now, and if we experience labor shortage, this is something good. If we take this perspective, of course, I understand the difficulties. I understand that uh, it's uh, there is a problem with、um, shortage of labor, but the solution to this shortage is not the lowering of the SMW rate. It's not resolving the or tackling the problem at source. The Point is for the whole of Hong Kong, there is a shortage of labor. So, secretary should come up with something to resolve the problem of labor shortage. For example, more women in the workforce. We have 
600,000 women present who are housewives who need to take care of their families instead of um, joining the workforce. So it's a comparatively a uh, low percentage. So if we have uh, more women engaging in different jobs, then um, more male workers can, say, take up uh, other jobs like drivers. This can be a solution to resolving shortage of labor. Uh, for example, encourage, encouraging more women to work. I really have to say this. After hearing uh, from you, I really think that a labor shortage means a successful implementation of the SMW. So if you want to speak, please raise your hand and uh, please indicate to me. Uh, Dr. Kwokake, uh, Yik Chi Ming. Uh, Kwokake, did you raise your hand? Yik Chi Ming, Kwokake. Uh, and who else? Secretary, if you want to supplement, uh, you're welcome to do so. So, Mr. Yi Chi Ming first. Thank you, Chairman. Chairman, just now you made some remarks, and I'd like to respond to your remarks. You said that it's a good thing for Hong Kong that we have SMW. I think uh, the uh, there is general support. But if you say that um, SMW have caused an increase in job positions. I can't agree with that, because over the past three years, uh, the economy has been quite good, and um, that is the cause of a labor shortage. And in certain specific sectors, the shortage of labor is really very serious. And in fact, they're already offering um, a wage level of over 28 or $30. Well, you can't say that there is no impact on them. The reason why they have to offer high uh, level, uh, level of wages higher than the SMW is because of the knock-on effect. If you increase the SMW rate, they need to offer even higher rates. Well, a lot of people have moved to jobs like uh, security guards and uh, promoters. Um, we have a lot of uh, promoters when the business is good, but if the business, uh, if the economy um, turns for the worst, then can we still be this optimistic? Now, some people today said that uh, SMEs couldn't survive not because of SMW, but because of high rentals. Of course, I agree that in um, for some cases that is the situation, but. This cannot be general, um, over generalized. Now, as I understand, for the catering industry, rental only accounts for some ten percent of their overall cost, but wage costs account for thirty percent. So, as I understand, for their industry, the uh, wage um, t actually wages actually take up a quite a large share of their costs, and many representatives of the sector have. Um, at their views today, so we have um, really listened to both sides. I have to clarify. I never said that SMW boosts uh, the number of jobs. Uh, that's not what I said. That's what everyone said. Uh, they said that uh, SMW has caused a shortage of labor, Dr. Kwok. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the 50 odd deputations who have come. Uh, I'd like to say a few words to employers. Well, we all uh, know that um, we have yearly reviews for a lot of things in Hong Kong. For example, Secretary, your pay and the civil service pay and the MTR uh, fare adjustment and the, uh, and the uh, electricity tariff. All these are adjust adjusted annually. For those who get their pay from the public coffers, they're subject to yearly review. So what's the reasoning for having biennial review for SMW rates? Now the proposed increase 
is uh, an increase of two dollars. So for someone who works eight, eight hours a day for 26 days a month, the increase is only about uh, four hundred uh, dollars. For MTR fare adjustment is uh, seven percent for two years. So for someone who lives in Tong Chong Chong or Tin Shui Wai, um, the uh, fares would take would uh, amount to one hundred percent, and um, that's an increase of uh, twelve percent. So the administration is the problem. The soaring property prices and rentals uh, have caused um, the problem, but the administration fails to admit this problem. The international uh, oil, uh, fuel prices affect the transportation industry and uh, also the freight and, and the container terminals in the mainland. We understand that all these are affecting you, but if we cannot guarantee a basic um, pay rate for our employees, then eventually they will have to resort to CSSA and what's good in that. Secretary, if you don't do a proper job in tackling the problem of the working poor, you are going to force more people to get out of their jobs and they eventually will again resort to CSSA. If the SMW is further pushed down, you will this uh, incentivize people from working. With all the expenses, they only get $28 or $30 an hour. If the SMW cannot be adjusted so as to reflect uh, or to meet their basic uh, expenses, then eventually um, the administration is to be blamed. Next, Mr. Chang. I think for our industry, the biggest problem is uh, labor shortage, and the uh, Labor and Welfare Bureau has to be blamed because over the past few years they have failed to uh, look at the situation. For uh, dump trucks, um, they are regulated by the EPD. They cannot work after 6 p.m. For dump trucks, well, the drivers earn $25,000 a month. So for con container truck drivers, we cannot recruit sufficient drivers. The point is, there aren't enough manpower. For heavy vehicles, well, they need to get a Class 20 license. And so uh, all the drivers switch to drive um, the other kind of vehicle. So we have to ask the government why the why people can uh, go on uh, receiving CSSA on a prolonged basis. In many other countries, this is not a basic human right. Any reply from the uh, secretary? Briefly, two points. On yearly review, I think I already explained uh, about that during the last session. And now we do have a mechanism. We're not confined to one review for every two years. If necessary, we can conduct reviews more frequently. The most important thing is that we adopt an evidence-based approach. The other point is that SMW has indeed uh, alleviated the uh, plight of the working poor, and um, according to the Hong Kong CSS, some 50,000 people have been lifted out of poverty. As for drivers moving on to uh, other fields, well, we're looking at the situation. We will try to work with the sector and see how this problem can be alleviated. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, deputations, for coming. Now, about the issues raised, I think that a more in-depth discussion on labor shortage should be discussed by the panel on manpower on another occasion.
because it seems to me that we're more concerned about the labor shortage than the review of the SMW rate, and this is a good thing. I hope that in the future, perhaps we can discuss with the secretary and see when the manpower panel can discuss this issue, perhaps at the regular meeting or special meeting, and see how labor shortage can be addressed. And we will also wait for the administration to submit their uh, finalized SMW rate, and more. I think more discussion will follow. Thank you.